From Adian. Facebook removed a post of my friends before and after progress pics. Mail and topless. For more context, the friend owns an online training business. Posts before and after pics to show the results and hopefully gain some more clients. Here's what Facebook had to say. Your promotion was not approved. This ad isn't running because it uses images that excessively focus on a person's body or any given body part. For example, focusing on abs or belly fat. This can make users feel bad about themselves and goes against our core value of fostering a positive global community. To see examples, check out our advertising policies. Scouty Steph replied, Decades from now, our children will be getting PhDs by studying the effects of Facebook on society, and it's not going to be a favorable analysis. Adian, your kid got a PhD. My kids couldn't get into medical school. Please don't remind me of your child's success. It hurts my feelings. But seriously, is Facebook happy being this much of a safe space? That people can't even be presented with people improving themselves? Insane. From Clonidine Dreams. Yes, losing weight is fat phobic. There is nothing more marginalizing than the removal of minorities from public places. When a person succumbs to diet culture and temporarily starts to lose weight, they are erasing one less plus size body from the world. This is extremely damaging as it's taking away representations from the body acceptance community, a community which already lacks said representation. It also implants the idea that a thinner body is more desirable and should be idealized an idea that has continuously inflicted harm upon others, both mentally and physically. I'm not saying that people shouldn't be allowed to lose weight, everyone is free to do as they please with their body, but rather question it. Anti-Apocalypse replies, When I was 17, a coffee house located across from the university residence I was living in forcibly, physically ejected two women in the middle of the day in front of a whole crowd of people because they held hands and one kissed the other on the cheek. On the cheek. It was upsetting for them and had a bit of a chilling effect for the LGB people on campus. But yeah, voluntarily showing up in public a little less fat and with your type 2 diabetes, NAFLD, asthma, arthritis, etc. under better control totally sounds like the same thing. From what erver? This is a popular picture posted onto Reddit. Self-made man by Victor Pina. It's a guy literally carving himself into a Greek god. I believe it's made out of clay, but I can't be sure. This looks like fat shaming. Seriously, if self-improvement triggers you, you need to improve yourself until it doesn't. But you cannot make me, posted, a little bit of sanity. Most parents say that they would die for their kids, but less than 30% will live a healthy lifestyle for them. From Anno Knitter. I was today years old when I found out that chest pains are a symptom of anxiety and that my parents are simply fat phobic when they say I'm going to get a heart attack because I'm fat, when in reality my doctor has said multiple times that I'm not unhealthy because of my weight. The expert replied, perfectly healthy, but has chest pains and frequently goes to the doctor. Side note, I've heard that chest pains can sometimes be uh, acid reflux, but the pain feels like it's coming from your heart. Acid reflux can be a very serious thing and can damage you long term and is frequently associated with obesity, though not always caused by obesity. From Designer Mitch. Good morning to everyone, except thin people posting side-by-side -side Instagram versus reality photos, forcing a belly roll in the name of bravery, also known as Instagram likes. Monster Mercy replied, if something sounds mean, just reverse the roles and see if it sounds okay to post. Good morning to everyone except fat people. Doesn't sound so good, does it? Thong of Zardoz replied. No, it's okay though. Thin people have privilege, so specifically attacking them is actually the best form of justice. A few posts about ads that people are complaining about. From Mermaiden64. Found in an ad for leather pants. The model was thin, but definitely not emaciated. It's apparently okay to shame if someone is thin. Please show them on a model who actually eats food more than once a week. Thanks. Someone replied. Body shaming isn't cute, Karen. Get over yourself, please. No one is body shaming the model. I'm shaming the company who saw fit to use her emaciated body to sell merchandise. 
From Mending Wall 27. Use models that better reflect BMI. It's from an ad of Home Depot where they show a thin woman. Home Depot, please consider using models that better reflect a healthy BMI. That woman installing the flooring is so slender that it is disconcerting. Someone replied, I have friends that are naturally slender. I see nothing wrong with the model. I don't know anyone that's slender. An athletic model or one with a BMI in a normal range would make more sense. I realize people can be healthy both above and below the normal BMI range. I still think a model that isn't underweight makes sense. Yes, people are underweight and overweight. Blah, blah, blah. Viv Lafarce replied, I think they literally have no idea what people with a healthy BMI look like. Perspective shift. And one more about ads, this time from This Bleak World Alone. Context, she's commenting on a chocolate bar shaped bath bomb video that was jokingly described by the company as having zero calories. I really love your products, but this ad made me cringe. Diet culture is toxic, right down to the idea that a person has to give themselves permission not to feel guilty for eating a food. I would love to never read or hear food described in terms of morality again. Calories is not morality. I was so bad at ADAX. Having that kind of language in an ad about bath bombs just reinforces those ideas. People are going to continue making dumb jokes. I make them all the time and annoy my family to no end. So you're just going to have to find a way to deal with it. Screaming at the universe isn't going to change anything. From Love Dove Bunny. Okay, I'm curious. A meadow more of mine, a partner of my partner, has been diagnosed with a hiatal hernia. I'm told that my metamor will not be getting surgery until they lose weight in order to bring the abdominal pressure down. Said pressures pushing their stomach up into their lungs. Supposedly the docs used to just do surgery, but now they don't because they have statistics that say above the XBMI, the stitches just tear out and cause a hernia all over again. To me this smells of weight stigma, but I suppose it might possibly be true. At least in the short term, like while things are healing. The problem, of course, being that, sing it with me now, permanent significant weight loss isn't an achievable goal, and tends to rebound with interest, making the problem worse in the end. So I'm concerned on behalf of my friend and my metamor, who has now been told that they cannot get the surgery until they lose X pounds. So they continue to be in pain and have significant problems until they lose X pounds, without of course being able to move or even go outside for the foreseeable future, whereas a thin person with this diagnosis would already be scheduled for surgery enabling them to get back to their supposedly active lifestyle. And tangentially related, I am concerned for myself because this has also already turned into at least one fight with my amour, because now there is freaking diet talk happening, and it apparently ought to be okay with me because it's for meta amour's health. When I tried the what treatment would you recommend for a thin person question, I was given surgery, but we won't do that in this case because BMI. No other treatments were apparently suggested other than weight loss apparently. Amor just kept repeating what the surgeon said about statistics, slamming head into desk. So folks, I turn to ask you if you have any unbiased data on this. Should I encourage Metamor to get another opinion? Are there other treatments? Is this just lazy surgeons? Or is it actually true that there's only one option for a fat person to deal with a severe hiatal hernia is weight loss? Thanks. Mao Nui replied, why do they always think doctors do this out of malice? It's a poopy situation. The fact that they refuse to stick their heads in the sand, like fat logicians do, is hardly fat phobia, much less meanness. They act like doctors are fat phobic because they are actually interested in the outcomes of their decisions one year down the road. It's parody at this point. From a bunch of numbers. The truth is, there is no qualitative difference between dieting and disordered eating and eating disorders. All an eating disorder is, is someone using a lot of strategies to lose weight. Whether it gets classified as an eating disorder or not depends on how much distress it causes the person, how well they're able to let go of the behavior, when they're tired of dieting and gain the weight back, which in my opinion is the best possible outcome, and whether their body type, gender, race, socioeconomic group puts them on the radar of medical professionals as possible eating disorder patients. The idea that there's some real tangible difference between dieting and eating disorders is a kind of mirage. Sanity pills. The hilarious thing about this is that they say there's no difference between the two, and then goes on the long list of differences between the two. There's no difference between jumping off the cliff to your death and paragliding. Whether it gets classified as gliding or not is if you are provided a paraglider, stay afloat in the air for an extended period of time, are deemed to have landed safely, and being connected to a harness. So as you can see, paragliding is the exact same thing as falling to your death. 
from Yogurt Closet Famous. Pants don't fit? No problem. Throw them in the trash, set them alight, and remember that you are worth so much more than a clothing size. Selkie Flying, why not just donate them? Unamused Cat, and let some skinny bee have free pants? No thanks. And now a bunch of stuff about Rebel Wilson, who had the audacity to lose weight. Why Rebel Wilson's weight loss is sad for so many women like me. As the actress charts her year of health on social media, here's why it's making me uncomfortable. That last one was from an article in a major magazine. The next one is from USA Today. Can we please stop talking about Adele and Rebel Wilson's weight loss from Hannah Yashara? If Wilson decided she wanted to lose weight for health reasons, good for her, unfortunately. Much of the discussion surrounding celebrities' weight overlooks a lot of unknown information. To assume that a person is or isn't healthy based on how much they weigh. For the record, being thin isn't always healthy either. And Vogel's Net brings us more about Rebel Wilson's weight loss. The biggest issue with what she did was not because she lost weight. She literally made the statement of being fit and have others notice her as that. She could have easily kept that to herself but instead she felt right into the poison of society and let down many plus size. Fans that clearly looked up to her and other plus size influencers and models for representation and not letting society tell them they need to look a certain way to feel accepted. It may be your body, your rules, but when you make it public you're looking for approval and stating that the former you was never good enough and you like where you are now and feel you can gain much more in the size society accepts you in. It's degrading toward plus size bodies as a whole. People can pee off with the health talk, because if it really was about health, you wouldn't be posting your weight lost in public and trying to make a statement in how you wish to be seen and stated as acceptable now, since the former was not good enough. It's stuff like this that pees me off. Hate to see it. And someone else added, Whenever I see a fat, famous person post about their intentional weight loss, I say goodbye to them. They can do what they like, but I don't want to hear or see about it. Same, I unfollowed after this post. At this point I was thinking that's as bad as it's going to get. But the comments actually get worse from here. Let's not forget that she's been dating a grade A rich white boy heir to the Bush beer throne. Who prides himself on healthy living. I don't know how much I trust this weight loss was for her work. Ew. Also I don't want to make too many assumptions but she looks uncomfortable and happy in a lot of her photos on Instagram. She looks miserable and exhausted. Punka. Gotta love the fat logic of her man made her do it. When every other woman on my 600 pound life has a partner who fetishizes their obesity and ferries buckets of ice cream to her as she stews in bed 24 7. Inside sympathy. Not just her man, her white man made her do it. It's important to point out his race because remember thinness is inherent to white people in colonialism. From Action Hank. This is also the same when people tell me to lose weight to be healthy or to get rid of chronic pain. Like when family does it. Losing weight and the lengths people go to be thin doesn't equate to health. In fact, it's usually very unhealthy because of the restricting and measures taken to pursue thinness. Also, losing weight doesn't actually address the health issue? Question mark. What do I mean by that? Okay, I have back pain and losing weight might just take some pressure off it. But what if my spine just needs an adjustment and that's what's wrong? What if I'm eating foods that are causing inflammation and that's contributing to the pain. We need to look at the root cause, and the root cause isn't weight. What size people are and what people eat isn't anyone else's darn business. You need to worry about yourself, and that's it. That's a little ironic after all those people from the fat acceptance community making comments about Rebel Wilson's weight. Little Sally Racket replied, I don't know what's causing my back pain, but I do know it definitely isn't the one thing I'm coincidentally too lazy to resolve. FWIW, I used to get a lot of lower back pain when I was fat, but since I lost weight and started exercising, it's completely gone. Completely. Now that I don't have all that weight on my belly, which was almost certainly dragging my spine out of alignment, I just don't get backache in my lower back at all. Also, even if weight is not the cause of back pain, I think we can say fairly confidently that it does at the very least make it worse. But yeah, tell me again how losing weight is usually very unhealthy. Auntie Apocalypse replied, Weird. When I lost that extra almost 40 pounds of booze weight and got my body back with a hip that had been so badly locked up that I couldn't cross my leg, tie my shoe, or wash my foot in the shower unlocked and stopped hurting. And those aches and pains in the arches and heels of my feet that woke me up at night finally effed off too. Must be entirely a coincidence. From Holy Redacted 
metabolic rate does vary, and technically there could be large variants. However, statistically speaking, it's unlikely the variants would apply to you. The majority of the population exists in a range of 200 to 300 kilocalories from each other, and do not possess hugely different metabolic rates. Super duper man boy replied, So if I have six cheeseburgers and go home, and sit on my butt all day, and Sally has two cheeseburgers and then goes for a hike, all the while I'm fat and she's thin, it's not my metabolism? Well, who am I going to point fingers at now? Sally. That's who. Twig B. From Love Dove Bunny. Hi, everyone. I've been trying to adhere to HAES and maintain a healthy lifestyle. My labs show I'm completely healthy. Aside from slightly elevated cholesterol and stage 1 hypertension, I do need to exercise more, but pandemic. My issue is that I've been experiencing joint pain, not rheumatism, and since my labs are clear, I'm afraid my practitioner will pin it all on my weight and tell me I need to lose weight to treat it rather than helping otherwise. Is there a link between joint pain and weight? Is there any HAES approach treatment for it? I've been having a hard time finding anything online or in the book. Thank you. Read, read, read replied. I'm completely healthy besides these two fairly important things that make me not completely healthy. OC scribe. Three things. Don't forget that she has joint pain too. Joint pain is a medical mystery. We have no idea what causes it or how to fix it. From Elmere 2000. Most people have bought the diet industry's assessment that our bodies are as simple as calories in and calories out. In other words, that if we eat less, we will weigh less. This translates into the false belief that people who weigh more are eating more than they should. The belief that there's a simple equation either in terms of calories consumed or the particular type of calories is a vast oversimplification of a complex metabolic system. It is based on assumption, not scientific fact. People in vastly different body sizes can eat and expend the same number of calories and yet weigh very different amounts. This is a biological fact. It's not true that if we ate less, all of us would weigh less. And eating less creates significant physiological and psychological side effects that damage health both short-term and long-term. Awkward office. They really don't understand long-term impact. Yes, if an overweight person ate and expanded the same amount of calories as an underweight person for one day, heck, even a week, then yeah, the overweight person would still be overweight and the underweight person would still be skinny. But do that same routine as the smaller person long term, and they will start to shrink to the same size. Your body is created from a lifetime of your habits. If you're the type of person who takes so much time and effort to lose weight, it's because the habits of your lifetime have been more extreme than others, and created much deeper damage which will obviously take longer to repair. But it doesn't mean it's impossible, just that you have a bit more work to do than the average person. From Love Dove Bunny The biggest grocery supermarket chain in my area has been on a big wellness kick in the past few years. They advertise that there's a registered dietitian on staff with coded language for weight loss. I can't stand shopping there, so I avoid it as much as possible. I made the mistake of reading through the advertising circular that came in the mail this week. It's so frustrating. Like. I can't even shop for food without being harassed for my choices. Why is a grocery store, whose purpose is to sell food and make money, guilting its customers like this? Have any of you successfully pushed back against this kind of marketing? What strategies, techniques did you use? Guy Musk replied, she's not being harassed for her food choices. She's being haunted by them and blaming the store for the choices she made. From Clonendine Dreams. I'm probably mispronouncing this medical word I'm about to say. I've recently been diagnosed with mild hepatomegaly due to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The recommendation from my doctor is simply weight loss across the board. I tried to discuss healthy eating and exercise with her and stated that while I was more than willing to participate in those behaviors, I have no control over whether I would lose weight as a result. And her response was that the weight loss was the only thing that will improve or resolve this diagnosis. I'm at a loss. Any thoughts? Apparently, up to 85% of fat people have some sign of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So obviously not everyone with this condition is going to suffer ill effects despite the stereotypes. Not all fat people are unhealthy. Still, it can be a sign of broader metabolic disturbance, and over time, people with this condition are more likely to develop type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease can also progress to more severe forms of liver disease, like cirrhosis of the liver. Clonendine Dreams replied to herself, also the person in the ask completely ignoring their doctor and going to a blog on Tumblr for medical advice instead. This isn't the entire response, obviously. The rest of this post was about how it's a moot point to whether weight loss improves this condition or not, because 95 to 97% of people gain it back 
and weight cycling makes fatty liver worse. And advice like to exercise helps liver function regardless of weight and take omega-3. The last thing they say is to avoid stress and weight discrimination, meaning doctors like this. From Ginger Kitty Cat. I don't get it when I see skinny people running. Aren't you done? That was clearly a joke, but it triggers someone anyway. This seems kind of weirdly fat phobic by proxy. If you assume skinny people are done, you'd assume fat people are running slowly to lose weight. I hope this is intended to be a send up of that attitude rather than reinforcing it. From Lucky Lanier, are medical facts body shaming? The fact is, weight loss is easily achievable for 95% of the population. There are no excuses. If you want to be obese and are fine with the consequences, then so be it. You deserve to be treated with basic human decency and respect. That being said, it is not a healthy lifestyle, and the fat acceptance movement that tries to deem it so isn't helping. I think you will agree that that was a lot of sanity. Someone replied with some insanity anyway. You speak from a tiny bit of experience. You were on the successful side of weight loss that probably won't last. If it was easily achievable for 99% of the population, 99% of the population would have done it. The reality is that 95% of the people who lose weight gain it all back again. You are not some outlier. You are going to gain it back just like everyone else. Stop thinking you are special and have all the answers. The answers you claim to have are actually what got the U.S. into the state it is in now. High carb, low fat diet, calories in, calories out, eating often, eating highly processed diet foods, focusing on fiber. You can't see the forest for the trees. This is a systemic problem that can only be solved systematically, not by individual actions. OCR Amazon replied, Wait a darn minute, how is focusing on fiber possibly bad? Unless it's giving you crippling gas pains? Ostentia, because fiber comes from vegetables. Evil vegetables. From Elmir 2000, Yes, weight management is a form of weight stigma. Sorry for the blurriness on this part for the 1% of you who actually look at the screen. We're in the middle of weight stigma awareness week. So we gotta have this conversation. You align with weight inclusive practices, non-diet principles and guidelines, don't prescribe the restrictive diets and or don't want to follow one, but you provide a weight management service? This is a form of weight stigma. Oh, I know. You intend no harm and maybe feel kind of uncomfortable and want to be like, no, it's not. It's weight inclusive. I'm just helping folks who want or need to manage their weight. Here's the thing though. By managing weight, the implications are weight can be managed. And probably in this case, the hypothesis is it can be managed through the seemingly simple input-output equations. But we know these don't hold up. Weight is way more complicated than that. Wait a second. If you can manage your weight, then weight can be managed. She realizes her logic makes no sense at all, right? 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 All right, let's continue. Weight should be managed because health, but weight isn't a good proxy for health. I know you'll think of some hypothetical exceptions, and we can talk through that. Health has many different spokes. Weight doesn't need to be the center of that wheel. And the foundation of the all, a higher weight is bad, therefore should be changed. The last one is where we really need to hone in. Yes, of course, folks, you want to lose weight because of weight stigma. That doesn't mean weight loss or management is the answer. And this definitely has no place in eating disorder care. When weight management is a service and or a focus, it reinforces weight stigma, which is negative attitudes toward higher body weights, weight bias, and discrimination based on weight. It upholds fat phobia. It upholds thin dominance and thinness at the top of the health totem pole. Two dozen cockroaches. I have chronic pain and fatigue. For me, weight management is a part of a holistic health management that includes diet, exercise, and stress management. I have to be careful to keep my weight and activity levels in a healthy range in order to better manage the pain and fatigue. It's not something that is ever going to go away or get better. It's a lifetime disability. So maybe you should step back and consider how ableist you're being. From Clonandine Dreams I stumbled upon your sleep apnea articles tonight, and it couldn't have been more timely. I recently went to a sleep clinic, and despite me not having any of the symptoms... The doctor took one look at me and pronounced that I had sleep apnea because I was fat and told me to lose weight. For the record, I am never going back to that clinic, but thank you for helping to affirm my stance that there is no weight apnea correlation. 
Awesome! Just one small correction. There's absolutely a correlation between sleep apnea and weight. Fat people are more likely to develop sleep apnea than thin people. But that doesn't mean that fat causes sleep apnea. There could be lots of other factors that associate with both fatness and sleep apnea that cause these variables to co-occur. And it doesn't mean that weight loss will cure sleep apnea. Lots of research proves this to be the case. I just want to reinforce that essential distinction. Ancient Matter points out, Wait, why would you go to a sleep clinic if you had no symptoms? From Clonendine Dreams I've got a weird question for you. What are your thoughts on shows like My 600 Pound Life and Thousand Pound Sisters? I haven't seen the latter, but I do remember seeing a reality show about someone weighing 400 to 600 pounds when I was younger. It was really sad that I saw the show sometime in elementary or middle school. A child that young should not be shown such blatant fat phobia. I can only talk about what I remember of the show that I watched, a show I can't remember the title of. But one of the main aspects of the show was watching the woman attempt to lose weight. It was framed as her trying to escape diabetes. Watching her struggle, it felt hopeless. I felt like getting to a certain weight made you automatically have a disease from how they acted. They also, of course, made it seem like this was all in her control, when it definitely fudging was not. You do not have control over your weight, period. You also do not have control over your health status. That's really weird. When I watch my calories, I can 100% control my weight. Strange. I must be doing it wrong. Your weight is as genetically determined as your height, but we act like your height is just what you're born with. We don't scream at short people to magically become taller. As far as I know, we don't force them to do dangerous surgeries, starve themselves, or take height gain drugs that will never work. We don't blame short people for being short. We know that is just how their bodies work, but somehow that doesn't extend to weight despite it being the exact same situation. Then there's how 95% of the people who attempt to lose weight will gain it back and oftentimes even more than when they started within three to five years. It's impossible to lose weight if you're within your weight set point, but this woman went through so much trauma and pain and starvation to try to somehow control what their body had already decided and it was televised. Because apparently health is only private information if you're skinny. Those TV shows are damaging to everyone. But it's even more sick and horrible that diet culture and fat phobia have literally caused children to see this poison. No fat person deserves to be put on a show like that. It's thin, privileged prawns. It's eating disorder prawns. It's fat hatred prawns. The studies have shown that. I'm tired of people forcing those who are fat to suffer for their entertainment. They understand people volunteer to be on these shows, right? Nobody's twisting their arm. Is, is that so hard to understand? Is maybe this is the only TV show they've ever seen and they thought it was like people just breaking into other people's houses and then forcing them on camera? Is that what they think? Are they confused about the whole TV thing in general? Do they understand that there aren't actually little people inside their TV? OCR Amazon replied, If being 600 pounds was entirely genetic, that gene would die out immediately, as that high of a weight generally is accompanied by infertility and early death. Retro ranges. Evolution is fat phobic? From Chi Xiu, someone wrote, If you ate like me, you would look like me. And these were the responses. Thank you for the clarification at the beginning. Your beliefs are spot on, but your remark was absolute violation in those beliefs. You are fully aware that although you eat healthy, you also won the genetic lottery. It is extremely unlikely she would ever look like you. And that's why she's jealous. That being said, she's a horrible bully and was completely asking for it. So she deserved a nasty retort. Just not an untruthful one. Although yes, psychologically, it was the best way to hurt her. Because although she can never look like you, it puts the blame on her. It's also very telling that even though OP seems to understand the issue, she still defaulted to fat phobia as a response to an overweight person she doesn't like. If you're gonna be accepting, that shouldn't change just because someone is rude to you, even when they're as much of a butt trench as blank seems to be. OP was justified in clapping back, but this was a butt trenchish way to do it. Daisy Diaz replied, I stopped eating like a 6 foot 10 offensive lineman and started eating like a petite framed 5 foot 4 woman and suddenly... After 110 pounds of weight loss, I won the genetic lottery. That's how it works, right? I looked up how many calories an offensive lineman eats. According to Sam Wink, offensive linemen eat about 5,000 calories a day just to maintain their weight. That's because of the sheer amount of exercise they do and how large and muscular they are. From Vogel's Net. However, if you only want to eat fast food or foods with high sugar sodium content, then you probably have other underlying problems to solve first. Yeah. The underlying issue is addiction. 
Your addiction is caused by attempting to restrict or limit certain foods like nuggets. I promise, if your body really truly believed that you would allow it to have unlimited nuggets every day forever, your addiction would disappear pretty quickly. You might even stop liking nuggets entirely. Mustancho replied, The idea that the body has beliefs is so bizarre to me. Blutarg, Same here. What am I, a dinosaur with two brains? Rawr! From Pillow Princess. This isn't exactly fat logic, but it's related. I was shamed out of Torrid. The following instance happened before Budweiser 19. So, I'm a very petite girl. I'm around 5'3", 110 pounds, barely fill an A cup. However, my friend is my exact opposite, 6'1", a J cup. I don't know her exact weight, and I'm not going to speculate it. But the point is, she wears torrid sizing, and I wear not torrid sizing. However, we shop together because, well, friendship. So once we were shopping, and we went into torrid. She grabbed some stuff and went into the dressing room, and obviously I stayed in the store. I was just looking at jewelry and shoes while waiting. I heard a girl say, I don't know why skinny girls have to act like they belong everywhere. I turned and saw two girls looking at me. I ignored them and went back to looking around. The other girl said, I don't know why anyone wants to look like that anyway. I just gritted my teeth because I can stand in any store while waiting for my friend. Also, I wasn't wearing anything that could be perceived as flaunting my thinness. It was a bulky sweater and some mom jean type pants. Finally, I heard them make some comments about my anorexic butt and my boy chest. I get it. Fat shaming is a terrible thing that happens, and skinny shaming isn't quite at the same level. And I also know that Torrid isn't a store that was made for my size range. I get it, I do, but can we not be bees to other women, especially when we aren't doing anything to hurt other people? I ended up leaving because I've had an eating disorder since I was 12. I'm 21 now, and I've struggled a lot with my body. So when they started directly insulting me, I went outside and texted my friend where I was. There was no reason for these women to attack me. I wasn't insulting them. I wasn't trying to make them feel bad. I was just existing in the same store. I have been told that I should respect spaces that belong to other people, but I don't think I was being disrespectful for looking at shoes when my friend tries on clothes. I've been thinking about that day a lot. I wish I could have told them that body shaming me wasn't necessary, and that I wasn't trying to make them feel bad about themselves. I just wanted to wait for my friend, the same way she waits for me in stores she can't necessarily buy things. Holy poop, I can't believe that girl felt guilty because two women were awful to her. I kind of wish she'd done something to get petty revenge, but... The Socio Dark brings us... Sumo wrestlers eat up to 7,000 calories a day, yet don't typically suffer from symptoms of obesity. Symptoms of obesity? Isn't that phrase interesting? Symptoms of obesity? They're quoting an article. Normally, people with obesity store a portion of their extra fat deep within the abdomen, where it wraps around the pancreas, liver, and other vital organs. We call this visceral fat. It pollutes the blood with molecules that can cause inflammation, and this is why obesity can lead to health issues like high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and heart attacks. But sumo wrestlers don't usually suffer from these symptoms. So what's their trick? CT scans reveal that sumo wrestlers don't have much visceral fat at all. Instead, they store most of their fat right underneath their skin. That's why scientists think sumo wrestlers are healthy. They have normal levels of triglycerides, a type of fat in their blood, and unexpectedly low levels of cholesterol, both of which lower the risk of heart disease, heart attack, and stroke. So how did they hit the jackpot on fat? Studies show that intensive exercise may prevent the buildup of visceral fat. Basically, it has to do with how exercise increases a hormone called adiponectin. Adiponectin guides glucose and fat molecules out of the bloodstream, where they could build up as visceral fat, and instead puts them underneath the skin. And now she replies to that article. It's almost as though obesity itself is only representative of the person's weight and not their actual health. It's almost like people can be fat, active, and healthy all at the same time. That fat people can actually have lower risks of heart disease, heart attack, and stroke than the average. That someone's appearance does not inherently depict their health. Huh. That was a strange conclusion to come to from reading that article. Honey Eater replied, Life expectancy for Japanese men according to the World Bank, 81 and a quarter years. Life expectancy for sumo wrestlers, from the wiki because I'm lazy, 60 to 65 years. Because surprise, surprise, many develop type 2 diabetes or high blood pressure, and they are prone to heart attacks due to the enormous amount of body mass and fat they accumulate. Honey Eater added, Wait, the linked article that this person is holding up as proof that fat doesn't equal healthy says the same thing too. Either they didn't bother reading it themselves, or they deliberately left out the bit that disproves their point. From Mending Wall, a thin woman asked how she can help be an ally to fat people. 
she received angry responses. Thank you for this post. It's extremely educational and I enjoy reading your thoughts. I am someone who, as you stated, does not have to face those outside mistreatments that you do to love my body. I have a lot of questions and would love to get them answered by you, so I can better defend, stand up for, and be an ally to all bodies. Where can I send these questions to receive your answers? Heart, have you already read all her work? Are you going to pay her for her time? First step of being an ally is not demanding others labor for free. Maybe instead look up books on fat liberation and activism and invest money into fat activists instead of looking for free labor on Instagram. Instead of attacking me, you both could have suggested this in a much kinder and less aggressive way. I'm clearly asking how I can be better and why your responses do give great suggestions and have accurate statements that I agree with. I hope you are more considerate next time when someone is trying to learn. Trying my best. Hearts. K. You appear to have deleted your first comment. Maybe don't fudging tone police. Educate yourself and stay in your fudging lane. I don't fudging want your kindness. I want you to educate yourself and learn what tone policing is. The point is that educating yourself is your responsibility. And as an adult, I'm sure you can find these resources. A lot of them are linked here for free. This constant cycle of the oppressed, having the burden and responsibility to educate the privileged, here fat activists being asked to educate the privileged folks, is exhausting and perpetuates the oppression. This bleak world alone replied, Wow, and this is how they treat people that actually want to support them. Can you imagine how they treat their enemies? I think whatever that angry person's eating is not working for them and it's messing with their hormones. If you're constantly angry, you're probably eating something bad for you. From Alpha Bell. So what's your solution to building a fit physique? Either way, you're only partly right. Eating the right calories and macronutrients is 90%. Exercise is the 10%. There is no way you are either born that way or not. At the age of 40, you will start gaining weight even if you only drink water. Ha ha ha. And you have to watch it all the time. Exercise and any heavy physical labor may actually do more harm to your body than obesity. Burning calories damages your body by itself and increases aging. The only option is calorie restriction, which actually can even increase your lifespan by 50% if we believe experiments on mice. But the question is, if that life will be worth living if it's constant starvation. But if you ask for my solution, I think that there's a real good way after all, which will do no harm and allow you to get rid of calories without burning them. It's producing milk. Women who want to lose weight just need to use drugs to induce lactation, and then they can literally suck all the fat from their body with the efficiency comparable to liposuction. That way you can enjoy pleasures of eating and not getting fat. That is not really an option for men, but maybe it could work as well. I just wonder why nobody's using this method even if it is even known to work, and it is most pleasant of all options. A more scientific option would be to add some kind of energy burning implant into the body, so that it will just harmlessly burn as many calories as you desire. But otherwise, any method that makes your body burn calories by itself is undesirable, as it will cause aging. Killer Tapir We're beyond fat logic now, we're entering fat sci-fi. Exercise has been shown to reduce your all-cause mortality, which means it tends to make you live longer, not shorter. So that person is entirely full of BS. Or uneducated. It's hard to tell which. From Miss Beaver. I'm five foot four, 425 pounds, a size 28, and pretty much the last person many would expect to rep a brand like Quest Nutrition. But that assumption would be based on fat phobia and not in how I live my life. I exercise regularly and eat healthy just as I have for years. I'm not on a diet. I'm not trying to lose weight and I couldn't even if I tried. I exercise because I enjoy it. I love the adrenaline rush and calm that follows. I'm hashtag on a quest for health. Nothing more, nothing less. I know that despite clearly stating that I live a healthy lifestyle, there will be plenty who will comment on this post with the claim that I'm promoting obesity and promoting an unhealthy lifestyle because that's just how it is. When you're fat like me, it doesn't matter how you live because you'll be judged as subhuman regardless. But the thing is, no matter what they say about me, their opinions cannot change who I am. I will always be strong. I will always be determined. I will always love myself exactly as I am, fat rolls and all. P.S. For those who go, you clearly must not actually exercise or are doing it wrong if you don't lose weight and it's scientifically impossible for you to be that size if you truly live a healthy lifestyle. My answer to you is, it's not my fault if you don't understand science well enough to know that you're wrong. Cauliflower Rice replied, the perfect subject for secret eaters. From a bunch of numbers. I drink six cups of coffee a day and eat maybe once a day and I'm still gaining weight. When do I get to become strung out chic? 
Do you want the real answer? You're probably not eating enough calories and your body is in storage survival mode. I have been in enough 1200 calorie a day diets to know that it's not enough for my body. I only start losing weight at around 1400 calories or so. Interesting. I've never really done calorie counting much in the past, but I imagine it's more important now that casual daily exercise is so reduced. Moving only from bed to desk to WFH is feeling like such an unhealthy way to live, hey. I undid three years of very hard work in the gym kitchen during the first six months of Budweiser. Just finding my way back now. I don't count anything per se, but I know enough about my body from previous stints to know that less is not more. Teresa, if those coffees are double doubles and large, then six of them is nearly 1600 calories. So maybe she's eating what she says, but is delusional about liquid calories. Or she goes on binges on the weekend and doesn't count them. Or thinks that if nobody's watching or eat the Twinkies, they don't count. Or puts in six scoops of sugar on every single coffee. There's so many ways to cheat on a diet. From Dorkita. I would love any articles or topics to search regarding sugar or anything diet culture labels as junk food to share with a friend who was coming at me about sugar being addictive in the industries like cereal manufacturers. Creating food that makes people want more of it. I tried telling her that I don't disagree that capitalism wants money regardless of the product, but sugar isn't addictive. She said that my argument put the weight on the consumer and she wants to hold food manufacturers responsible for their ingredients and behavior, using unnatural chemicals and making us want to eat bad food more. She went all over the place with, well, what explains this, 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 things like fast food coming into Asian countries and the weight response? When I tried to share the information about sugar activating the same centers of the brain as puppies, and that deprivation is the addictive indicator. Even if you don't have an article to share, do you have any advice on how to kindly encourage her to do more research? Even a blog post article about that, how we need to be suspicious of these things we are taught. And it is time to research those narratives with HAES applied. Caitlin replied, So the crux of their current argument is sugar activates the same areas of the brain as puppies. Citation needed. And puppies aren't bad, therefore copious amounts of sugar aren't bad either. If that's really the case, then maybe look at a picture of a puppy next time you're tempted by food you don't need. Had a gun. To be fair to her, a lot of things get blamed on dopamine. Dopamine is released in every action. What she is saying is correct here. Caitlin added, Eesh, I have a degree in psychology and neuroscience. Just because two stimuli create similar responses in the brain doesn't mean they are somehow on the same level health-wise. For example, both opiates and sugar intake might increase the release of happy neurotransmitters, but obviously one stimuli is more potentially addictive destructive than the other. Also, dopamine isn't released in every action. Source, major depressive disorder. From Comprehensive Amoeba over in No Stupid Questions. If cigarette companies can get sued for causing cancer, why aren't more food companies being sued for causing obesity? Zarendorf. I think the biggest difference is that when you use food correctly, you don't increase your chances of obesity. When you use a cigarette as intended, your chances of cancer skyrocket. Also, the whole thing where cigarette companies lied about what cigarettes do to your body. Over in r slash news, Jokeschult posted, Berkeley set to become first U.S. city to ban junk food in grocery store checkout aisles. Apparently, Berkeley is a city that's well known for its ties to the slow food movement. When I looked up the slow food movement, it said, Food represents a common language and universal right. Slow Food USA envisions a world in which all people can eat food that is good for them. Good for people who grow it, and good for the planet. In essence, food that is good, clean, and fair. On the face of it, it sounds like a good company. I can't say any more than that. Over in r slash science, Tex908 brings us, A world first study has found that severely overweight people are less likely to be able to rewire their brains and find new neural pathways, a discovery that has significant implications for people recovering from a stroke or brain injury. And also another potential problem with being obese, although it's hard to tell what's cause and what's effect. Are people with non-plastic brains more likely to be overweight, or does being overweight more likely to cause you to have a non-plastic brain? Back in Fat Logic, Lunario brings us somebody angry that people are commenting on their cat's weight. To those concerned about my weight, big cat versus little cat, 28 pounds versus 9 pounds, both cats live in the same household and got fed the same way when little. One packed on the pounds, the other didn't. Why? Because all cats are different. Molly scribbles. I'm thinking the cat on the left ate the cat on the right's food when the human wasn't looking. Not Cinderella. This is exactly what my fudging fat orange cat does because I caught his butt on camera. 
Cats aren't immune to the laws of calories in, calories out. Blast guns and roses. I have four cats. Three are slim, one is fat. Guess what I caught the fat one doing? She's getting fed separately once a day and is slightly less fat now, but still a butt trench around food. And that segues us nicely into de-chonkers. 